All right. Well, look, firstly, I'd like to say thank you for getting involved today. My name's Peter McCarthy. Um, great to seeing everyone's name on the screen there. I've got lots of friends and colleagues um, that, that I've known for many years and some new, new faces and new names. So I'm um, just excited to share this sort of information with you. Today, uh, my presentation is on electronic rodent sensors, and I'm going to just share a screen with you in a moment. But what I'm really intrigued about with the, um, the process of um, rodent sensors. I've been working um, on a project uh, for the last three years um, with rodent sensors, and I'm really intrigued that uh, this is a, a truly interesting technology. Uh, it's going to offer a lot of positive disruption to the pest control industry, but it's interesting, only a very, there's been a very small uptake to rodent sensors in Australia, as opposed to other parts of the world, particularly Europe, and, uh, and America. And what's really interesting, uh, sensors, um, regardless of whether they're rodent sensors or lighting sensors or sensors for air conditioning systems or sensors for whatever in the service industry, it actually will have the same message. Um, they will uh, reduce the cost of uh, running a business. They'll improve the ability to scale up a business. They'll also, um, uh, that, that'll also reduce the labor intensity of a lot of the service provision that we're all doing. And so the interesting thing is there is a lot of positives when it comes to rodent sensors. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see if obviously with some forward thinking, smarter businesses can start look at this in an uptake uh, type proposition. Now today, I'm going to be talking about a, a variety of different sensors, not just one particular brand. Um, there's some really exciting stuff and I'll get to that in a moment. Um, but also there are different types of sensors and different purposes for sensors. So I'll just um, get right into that. So let me uh, disappear up to the right hand side. I'm going to share a screen with you all. And uh, where are we? Um, share the screen. All right, so hopefully I am sitting in your top right corner or whatever it might be. Okay, so Fantastic. I've got to keep an eye on us also of people coming in, but I think we're ready to start. Okay. So today um, we're talking about rodent sensors and um, here is just the discussion point for the day. I'm going to talk about what are rodent sensors, the purpose of the sensors for our industry, uh, benefits to both businesses and to your clients, the different types of sensors. So we'll touch on cameras and trap sensors and spatial sensors and so on. The different connectivity platforms, how Basically, your sensor will connect to your own dashboard or to your own mobile phone, depending on what type of sensor. Uh, I will talk about the project that I've been working on and some of my colleagues are here in the discussion. Um, There's a, a brand called RatSense and also AveSense when we're using the sensors for bird management as well. Uh, we'll talk about some case studies of what our works have been over the last uh, couple of years. Um, and then also we'll just look at the, the, um, uh, the uh, future of um, uh, just letting more people in. Let's just press it a bit all. Okay. All right. I just realized there's been some people waiting. Great. So, uh, and then we'll talk about the future of uh, rodent sensors. All right. Moving on. Okay. There's a lot going on on my screen here anyway, so it's interesting. Okay. So just a quick bit of background. Um, there's quite a large number of different brands of sensors available internationally. There's just a handful um, uh, here in Australia, and obviously there's more coming in um, as, as the, the next 12 to 18 months um, presents themselves. And it's interesting when you Google the different uh, platforms in terms of connectivity platforms being used internationally and the different brands that are being used internationally, it's quite stunning to know that our colleagues overseas are really dialed into the use of sensors uh, for their their um, work with, with rodents. Now, in Australia, there's a wide variety of connectivity platforms, and that's basically um, how your sensor just connects to um, your either your dashboard on your, your um, computer or on um, a platform to your iPad or to your, um, uh, to, your, to your phone. And so we'll talk about the different platforms, um, and that'll be from either the 4 to 5G, as in the, the GSM networks. Then you'll have the IoT networks, which is called the Internet of Things. And then there's LoRa, uh, Wi-Fi, and a variety of others. Now, sensors are being used here in Australia, though very few um, 
companies seem to have adopted them. And we'll talk about the different um, uh, sensors that are available here in Australia. Now, classic examples would be our national pest control businesses are very forward thinking when it comes to rodent sensors. And so on a cl classic example would be um, the Flick pest control business, which have the WiseCon brand. Um, they have been very active in converting their commercial clients onto the use of sensors. And that's naturally a very positive thing for their business, uh, as does Rendikill. Uh, the project I'm working with is uh, RatSense um, through Create Tech Australia, uh, which is an Australian base of a Singapore business. Uh, Bell Laboratories have also bought out their sensors on, um, on snap traps. Uh, and Bayer are working on releasing theirs and also Captiva, uh, Cortiva. And I know Joanne's here in the, the discussion today. Um, I don't know a great deal. I've done a little bit of a looking into the, the I guess, the Dow brand or Cortiva. Um, uh, trap system or uh, sensor system. So um, I'll just be basically talking about a lot of sensors in a, in a fairly open discussion. And then I'll be looking at some specifics as we go on. So today I'll really be interested if anyone in the discussion uh, group uh, want to share their ideas. Um, this is an open discussion. So use your text function and you can actually, um, uh, you can, um, bear with me. I just noticed there's another screen that's popped up there. Okay. Da, 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 da. Ask to unmute. I am going to stop that. All right, Ray. <laughs> all right. Your Ray was popping up on the screen. All right. Um, and so the open discussion is that I'll be asking you all, um, if you're using census, please let us know. Um, I'd love to hear just through the chat function. Let us know if you're asking any questions, but also let us know what you're doing in terms of using census. All right. So the purpose of electronic sensors is literally to track what is happening with rodent movement throughout your commercial facilities. That'll give you the example of uh, the directional movement of your rodents, the entry points, co the congregation and nesting areas. You'll always have a primary and a secondary area where you've got con congregation. Um, but also it'll help you with um, the density of the population and it'll give you a true understanding of what's actually happening with rodents within that facility. So tracking that movement is a very powerful thing to share with your client. Um, second of all, you'll be working in, in the form of data as much as you'll be working with, with rodents. You're offering your client world-class data. You'll be supplying analytical diagrams, heat maps and information that will actually not only improve your ability to control and target your activity to your target pest, but it'll also give your client a true understanding of what's happening with their facility, how your service is being provided, uh, because we're now auditing the pest. We're just not auditing your service. And I'll explain that a little later. Um, but also you're providing that client with a true improvement to their own compliance, their own risk minimization. And that data is the most powerful and valuable tool that you can trade in in this new world of, of information and technology as part of pest management. The other element, of course, we're looking at the purpose is, is we're now working with rodents and understanding and tracing rodents in real time. We're not just checking rodent boxes on a monthly basis and then using barcoding to audit our service. We're actually monitoring the, uh, the, um, the, the target pest and we're doing it 24 seven in real time. Major difference to what we're doing right now as pest professionals. Other purpose of um, uh, rodent sensors is to reduce your labor intensity in checking devices. And you'll all know how um, many devices you check that require no escalation or checking whatsoever. Often you're checking rodent stations with no activity. And so by reducing the labor intensity, you're going to target only the stations that require a, 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 some form of interaction. Um, it's also going to allow you to improve your um, staff and human resources management because one, they'll only be looking at stations that require uh, assistance or some action, uh, but also you'll be scheduling your team in a different way because you'll actually give them an understanding of exactly what they need to be doing. And that's going to reduce a lot of the labor intensity and the wasted time in checking boxes that don't require boxes. But also it's going to give you a true targeted approach to where you're your issues are in these facilities. Okay, uh, but also in that process, uh, 
comes a, a, a new form of both artificial intelligence and predictive behavior. And the, one of the things that we have in our industry is a huge amount of, in, you know, I guess, real intelligence with you know, uh, employees and people, uh, team members that are very experienced. But now once you start bringing in more detail and data and then linking that with things outside of the scope of pest control, that could be like the weather patterns or other details um, that would give you de information um, that then allows you to offer your clients predictive behavior. And so that predictive behavior is really powerful to share with your clients. Um, the other element is you can gain alert on your the detection of rodents, be it on um, different snap traps, might have a sensor, which would then give you an indication that there's a carcass that need to be removed, or you can have sensors that would obviously um, give you detection in your live capture traps. And that would be very important, um, particularly in the world of animal welfare and new legislation that is, is all, uh, being introduced uh, throughout Australia. I'm just gonna have a quick look at chats. Hi everyone, okay, so there's um a few discussions there great i'll get to all of that all right continuing on um one thing i like about uh, doing a zoom discussion there's all these different uh, monitors here and there's lots of different discussions going on so the other element that's very important to using um uh, electronic rodent sensors is this covid world that we live in in fact by reducing the need to visit sites is an also a powerful tool because we can still monitor rodents 24 7 but we don't have to be continually going to the site or we can reduce the times that we're going to the sites or we can actually maximize the intervals between visiting sites that don't require any interaction you can actually monitor a lot of things from your desktop and then and perhaps change rodents rodent blocks uh, as in rodenticide blocks only at times of um, their use by dates uh, or you could be utilizing um, synthetic attractants to, um, uh, re you know, again, reduce that interaction and therefore reduce the need to visit these sites. Um, also, it Im improves your scheduling. I think I touched on that before. Scheduling improvements with live capture of, um, uh, of rodents or vertebrates, and then also uh, scheduling your team in a more targeted way is a, a very powerful tool. Okay. So look, just looking at those benefits, some of those things I've already touched on, we're increasing the um, efficiency of your rodent hardware. And so therefore we would um, target the areas where we have uh, rodent activity. It also going to give us um, an ability to improve our ability in hard to reach areas. And I'm always looking in, at, at my warehouse here where, where we're standing, but also above me is my, my office and the suspended ceiling. And of course, Rodent sensors are tremendous to gain great detail of what's happening in suspended ceilings, which are incredibly difficult to uh, obviously access and, and inspect. We're also gonna reduce uh, the use of rodenticides. And we're seeing in America and Europe, uh, a massive increase to the pressure on rodenticide use by um, homeowners, by professionals, and obviously through manufacturers. So you can actually reduce the amount of rodenticide by just targeting the use of rodenticides in areas where you actually have your rodents rather than right throughout the internal and external of a, of a facility. So that's going to reduce the rodenticide use, it's going to improve your environmental footprint, footprint, but it's also going to reduce the waste and reliance on poisons. That obviously is my line of thinking, but that's a modern way of thinking and that is something that obviously our industry needs to come on board with, reducing the use of rodent and reliance on rodenticides. Being pest managers, um, and managing a situation and proofing and cultural control and all the things that we should be doing, not just putting baits everywhere. And that's obviously the easier form of rodent control, but there's a, a smarter way. We also look at rodent um, sensors as a way to develop business. Developing business is obviously gaining new clients, more forward thinking clients that require an IT element to pest management but also developing opportunities, both in terms of improved profitabilities and increased sales. The other thing I think that uh, rodent sensors do is I think it makes pest control sexy again. Um, you know, we are an aging industry. And so by bringing in um, IT type solutions and sensor based solutions, uh, I think we're going to be able to attract a young and more dynamic um, cohort into the pest control industry. And I think one of the challenges that our industry has is getting new people into the industry. And with 5% um, uh, unemployment in Australia, gaining new uh, 
new technicians, I think we have to think outside the square. And I think sensors will allow our industry to do that. So other advancements would be um, client retention. Now, one of the things about putting your clients on contract, it's, it's a very powerful way to obviously hold on to your clients. But when you have sensors that are, are basically giving data to your clients, they get very addicted to that data. They become very reliant on that data. They want to know exactly where their rodents are. They want to know exactly the information through your heat mapping and density profiling. And so when at the end of your contract, you're looking at picking up your sensors and going home, that's a very powerful tool to retain that client and then move that client into a following, uh, 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 a following contract period. And when your sensor um, batteries will last such a long period, the whole idea is to retain that client for a longer period of time. So it's going to improve your animal welfare compliance because of course, live capture trapping can be monitored 24 seven. It also obviously is an improved commitment to our uh, environment, which I think is a very important thing as well. Okay, uh, right. Okay, some of the benefits to your client. So obviously the, the most important element about any business is minimizing risk. By giving your clients an early warning detection system, they're going to see less damage, less impact on their building, uh, on their building and on their their product or whatever that function of that business is, but it's gonna reduce that uh, risk um, that running that business will be. It's gonna improve their compliance, of course, because of course, they're gonna see an improved safety profile by removing rodents earlier. Uh, it's also gonna see less impact on the safety associated with whatever that function of business is. There's also gonna be a reduced cost to not only their business, but also a reduced cost to pest management businesses as well. But by reducing those costs to your client's business is a very powerful thing to share because your clients obviously look at the cost of their running, uh, running their business. Pest management is a cost of running their business, but the damage associated with um, damage of rodents to the function of that business is a very expensive uh, process, be it with um, damage to stock and inventory or other impacts that rodents have. And obviously damage to data cabling, of course, is one of those very significant things to the, both the logistics and the, um, uh, and, and the, the data transfer within a facility. So the other element to it is, of course, um, you're going to an automated and, and real-time reporting. So with sensors that's populating information to a dashboard that you have access to and also you can allow your client to have access to those dashboards and that information transfer is instant and so your client will see uh, information literally in real time and it's going to reduce the labor intensity of your administration staff as well really important okay just going to adjust my camera here there we go. All right. So what are the types of electronic rodent sensors? I'm not going to go through every different brand or I'm not going to go through and critique everyone's products. That's not what I do. Um, but what I would like to do is just give you some basic elements. So there are a bunch of different types of rodent sensors. Okay. One that I meant to have been looking all over my office today, looking for uh, these vibration or audible sound systems. So um, it, it's not actually this particular sensor that I'm holding, but, but just picture a, a snap trap with a little unit at the back there that has a little sound alarm. And so whenever the snap trap goes off, it will alert someone within that facility that there is a, a, um, a carcass in the, the other snap trap. And so a little bit goes off until somebody clears the carcass out. That's one very basic form of rodent sensor. Then you get to your passive infrared or PIR sensors. And an example of that would be this particular one here. I might stop sharing the screen later and show you these in a, a, a easier format because I know I'm just small in the top right-hand corner. But a little infrared sensor like RatSense can be uh, quite a useful process. Then you get a number of different units that combine the sensor in a trap system. And so examples would be, sorry, just met someone else in. Uh, an example would be this one is actually called trap sensor. Um, but uh, Bell Laboratories have uh, sensors on the T-Rex traps and there are a number of different brands uh, around the country or around the world actually that have traps on sensors. Now we tend to incorporate the use of sensors in traps, but also um, spatial sensors. And I'll explain the differences 
to, the, to how you use sensors uh, as we progress. But here's just an example of uh, two trap sensors, a, a mouse and a rat trap sensor. And then there are other types of sensors, perhaps not rodent sensors, but then there are different sensors that you can use um, to put on traps for vertebrate pests um, across um, one-way doors for possums and all sorts of di different, different options. The other element to real se to sensors can also be uh, trail cameras. Um, trail cameras is an example, uh, and uh, also the different doorbell cameras can be used. These are useful um, uh, for uh, species identification or for use in domestic roofs to see whether you've got uh, possums or rats. Um, but the unfortunate thing about big data or the big the use of either voice or in this case uh, moving pictures and video uh, they have a, a fairly significant impact on battery life and so fortunately or unfortunately the use of sensors and cameras have not integrated at, at this point to any large extent so cameras will have a very short life um, generally um, a couple of days maybe a week or two of some brands of battery life whereas when you compare them to sensors that will have a, a three to five year battery life it's a completely different ball game. And so we haven't seen um, cameras come to the, the true um, usage right throughout commercial facilities. All right. Okay, so just looking at how uh, various systems work, um, I'll talk about um, say uh, the uh, Sigfox signaling or the IOT network. So you often hear this term, um, either GSM, that's the, the mobile network that our phones and our, um, uh, our phones use on the 4G and, and 5G networks. Well, also there's another network throughout Australia called the IOT network and IOT stands for Internet of Things. And um, in this particular sensor that I have here called RatSense, um, we use the IOT network called Sigfox. And so essentially what you see here on the, the left-hand side are buildings. And I guess we're simulating the use of different sensors throughout those smart buildings. And sensors are used on all sorts of serviceable items within a facility. It could just be rat boxes, but obviously there are sensors on fluorescent lights, on exit lights, on entry doors, on, on just about everything. And so the idea of the sensors will all just basically send that signaling of activations up to the cloud and so on um, the gsm networks gsm can can uh, function by carrying voice and um, uh, and video and of course you call that big data and that's an example why your phone battery life generally only lasts a day day and a half because it uses a lot of battery in order to to transmit that that data Whereas the IoT network really sends small packets of information up to the cloud. And so the example there is it's just sending activations, yes or no, or movement. And so these units tend to be asleep most of the time and they send these small packets of information after waking up every 15 minutes or whenever they've been um, activated in our case by a rat, then it wakes up and then waits 15 minutes and sends the activations to the cloud, which then goes to your um, your dashboard to populate your dashboard through various algorithms and filters. And so the interesting thing is, that is why sensors um, battery life lasts so long. Um, so it's quite a unique and interesting process. So I'm going to just give you a, a quick oh, video. I won't say anything now. Its solution rat sense provides independent insights and continuous information on entry and exit as well as the level of rodent and mice infestations we mm. have okay so established a presence beyond singapore and already deployed commercially ready solutions in several countries like australia and new zealand with partnerships with telcos and system integrators oh look i um i do apologize i was just going to show you a video there um, of the, a team that I work with and um, Deanne, who's in our, our uh, discussion forum here today, but also just the, the image of, of Deanne, my uh, co-worker in um, uh, RatSense Australia uh, or Createc. Um, but unfortunately, I must be so far away from my Wi-Fi. And look, there's an example. I'm going to talk about the use of Wi-Fi uh, in a moment. But the interesting thing is um, using different connectivity platforms, as I'm trying to right now, 
Um, I'm communicating it through uh, the internet with you now, but also using um, our, our Wi-Fi. And it's just a classic example of um, how uh, there are different uh, advantages and disadvantages for using connectivity. So this next slide, it talks about the connectivity platforms. So essentially, um, a connectivity platform generally focuses on the subscription of that connectivity platform. So uh, when I um, pay for my, my phone, I was reaching for my phone, but it's in the upstairs, a phone uh, on the four and 5G networks, I pay you know, a $50 subscription for my phone calls um, on a monthly basis. So when we're using sensors on either uh, LoRa or um, the uh, IoT networks, we actually have to pay for that purpose. So we might buy a sensor, but then we actually have to pay to have that sensor connect to the cloud. Now, then you have some uh, obviously access costs associated with that. Now, there are low or no cost or no subscription uh, costs. And that one example would be of a low subscription cost would be Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi um, is um, obviously a in-house um, connectivity platform to the internet. And of course, you can use sensors that works in with your client's Wi-Fi. Um, and so some brands use Wi-Fi for that purpose. One of the biggest issues we have with Wi-Fi is the use of repeaters. I'm, I'm right near our, um, our Wi-Fi transmitter in my warehouse, but of course it wouldn't transmit the data of my video to you just because of the distance I am from that Wi-Fi router. So that's really interesting when you're trying to deploy sensors using Wi-Fi, you're impacted by your client's use of their Wi-Fi, the uh, availability of the Wi-Fi, and then the, the, de the cold spots or the, the shadow spots throughout the facility and on the outside of the facility. So Wi-Fi has some serious um, issues using um, your client's Wi-Fi for rodent sensors. Then subscription-based connectivity would be examples, obviously the 4 and 5G network and the IoT or Internet of Things network. You literally have to pay for the use of the, sense, uh, use of the connectivity platform. So when you're selecting your electronic rodent sensor, you must consider the sensor cost, the system architecture. So the system architecture is really the connectivity platform and your uh, dashboard makeup, which I'll talk about dashboards shortly, and obviously the sub subscription or connectivity costs. All right, so looking at platforms, you have subscription-free platforms, you have a higher uh, startup cost uh, and minimal running costs. And so with Wi-Fi, you have a higher output to, uh, sorry, higher financial commitment to have your team set up the network and obviously make sure that there is a um, connectivity right throughout the facility and on the outside of the facility. So it's a difficult platform to scale because then if you've got multiple levels of a building, you've got to then set up more networks and then that links with all networks and it's very difficult and cumbersome process. So why will it'll have minimal running costs, it'll have some significant short forms in terms of uh, setup fees and perhaps your ability to manage it all on a single, um, a single desktop. Now, subscription-based systems that use uh, the Internet of Things or LoRa or your various 4 and 5G networks, um, that will all basically be done. You'd set up a, a connectivity partnership. So I guess I'll say with RatSense, we use the Sigfox network. And so the idea is that that basically means that this sensor will connect directly to the cloud to then populate the information that you're sharing with your clients. And so a lot of the telcos around Australia are moving towards both 4 and 5G networks and uh, IoT networks in order to uh, ensure that all service providers have the ability to use uh, sensors for different purposes. Of course, today I'm just focusing on, on, on rodents. Okay, so just touching on the Internet of Things. It's an interesting process, but it's simplified by saying the Internet of Things allows this unit here to connect to the cloud, which then connects to your dashboard or your computer or, or your phone. Well, in our case with RatSense, it connects to a customized dashboard for our client. But the beauty of using um, IoT-based sensors is that they have um, very small transfer of small packets of information, which means that the battery life is very long. So we've got a, a three to five year battery life. Um, you tend to get reduced 
false positives because you can use certain uh, algorithms and um, filtration in order to remove things that perhaps are not rats and we can do different things to order, organize the information that is being shared with your client. So make sure that it's actually true and valid data. And so that data filtration has come about in our case from about 18, maybe 18 months to 24 months of, of use of RatSense in Australia. So your connectivity option, options are, of course, Sigfox for IoT, and then your other telcos have different forms of, of both GSM and um, IoT processes. Now, the nice thing about uh, using uh, true sensors, it means that uh, you can use sensors to, uh, to monitor rodents in hard to reach areas. And so the IoT network is, uh, um, uh, particularly when you, you can use uh, boosters to try and boost your signals in, inside facilities, uh, but then you can link all of your si systems or your sensors into a, a dashboard that actually populates information from your external rodent stations to your internal rodent stations. There's no meshing or linking between the sensors themselves. They're all independently communicating with your, your dashboard. Okay, so what are you going to do to select the right brand or right sensor for your business? Um, so first of all, you'll look at the sensor cost. So there'll be an upfront cost. Um, some sensors, I'm sure that there'll be rental processes. Uh, some, some sensors will have different types of financial mechanisms depending on the brand. But say generally you'll be looking at an upfront purchase of your sensor. Uh, then you'll look at the sensor system architecture. How are you going to connect that sensor to your information platform or to your dashboard. Then you look at your dashboard capabilities and I'll touch on uh, say the RatSense dashboard capabilities because that's the one I have access to. Um, but gaining information and sharing that information, building those heat maps and the population profiles for your clients a very important element. Uh, and then we look at the, that connectivity cost. So while you'll have an upfront cost, there'll be a cost in order to connect that sensor to the to the dashboard itself. Then you look at battery life and the battery life of your sensors can be uh, very broad. Some of the cameras, of course, will last only a few weeks. Some sensors will have a, a 12 month um, battery life. Um, uh, RatSense has a battery life of up to five years, depending on the amount of connectivity uh, issues that might be in that particular area. And also the activity, the greater the activity, um, the impact will be greater on, on the battery life. And then of course, what happens at the end of the contract when you extend your client into the next contract, will you have to replace the sensor? And of course, sensor battery life, maybe a few years ago was 12 months or 18 months. Well, now it's up to five years. Well, perhaps the next time you're reinstalling um, batteries or just reinstalling new sensors, you might find a lower cost, a uh, smaller sensor and a, a longer battery life again. So they're all the things that need to be looked at now. So looking at RatSense, uh, the project that I've been working on for the last um, uh, three, two or three years. Uh, so these are basically a sensor. The way we look at the Australian pest industry is you already have the hardware out there. You've got your different brands of rat boxes or snap traps. And so a sensor can be utilized in and around all of that hardware. That hardware does not need to be replaced. Many brands of sensors, we'll put sensors on traps, they'll be very elaborate, they'll probably be expensive, um, but that'll also be something that you have to replace all the equipment that you've already got in your commercial um, facilities. We find that, I find that quite counterproductive. But also the same sensor can be a spatial sensor, can be used on the production floor, uh, bases of the warehouse pallet racking, could be used in um, uh, ceilings, suspended ceilings, and so on. And so the idea is that as long as you are just pointing it in the direction of, of where the rodents are, and then the data can be filtered for different purposes, perhaps time or just directional and so on. So basically that's a, a very useful sensor in station and spatial. It's plug and play. You literally uh, put it in place, switch it on, and it's immediately active to um, the cloud connectivity. Um, so ideal for dead spaces because the IoT has uh, IoT network has incredible penetration into your facilities. Um, so dead spaces and runways, I've got that twice. Um, it combines the use of heat and movement and uh, light changes in your stations or in front of the 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 um, 
the PIR itself. I know it's quite small in the corner there, but um, these units will actually um, monitor rodents in a, up to about five meters with a 120 degree conical cone. And so the idea is if it's used on a production floor, then it needs to be pointed away from human activity. The action, um, the, um, the system, of course, oh, look with all sensors, are uh, um, you're uh, monitoring rodents in real time, 24 seven. And then that data can be filtered based on time. Perhaps most of your rodent uh, detection will be done uh, in the evenings uh, when there are no human activity or no forklifts around. Um, so this is a, a system to be used with the, uh, the Sigfox network and a very long battery life. So what I'm going to do is just show you some snapshots of what your dashboard um, would look at. Now I've only got the RatSense dashboard to show you. I know that all, all the different sensor businesses will have um, varying types of, of user interfaces. And so the idea is that um, your snap traps with sensors, they might just give you a ping to your mobile phone. It's not really populating any data for you or your client. It's really just telling you that a, a, a rat has been caught in a trap. Whereas the systems that use more of a, a user interface such as RatSense, it's actually populating data. One, that's stored, but two, it can be shared and with your client, but also it creates heat mapping. So what's on our screen at the moment? Uh, we can see uh, little arrows coming out from these dots. Those dots are actually the sensors themselves and the arrow would be telling us exactly what direction the, the sensor is facing. Now you can see you've got different colors here. And if um, while this is just a, a screenshot, uh, if I was to hover this over my dashboard, it would tell me um, the amount of uh, the, the, the number of detections I have in that area. The different colors will tell us whether I've had, you know, two, three or five um, uh, activations. In, in, a, um, in a time period. So in the dashboard, I can go through and look at the analytics and I can create different graphs to share with my clients and incorporate that into to, um, reports. So here's another example, and this is just a, another facility. Again, uh, I've got the arrows telling me um, in say a suspended ceiling, what direction the rodent station, uh, sorry, the, the rodent sensor is being pointed. And then where I've got um, these circles that actually gives me an indication of locations where I've got activity. So again, if I was to hover my mouse, uh, my cursor over that, that would actually tell me the intensity of the, um, uh, the activity in that particular area. And that is exactly where I would send my technician to actually do a treatment rather than going over the whole facility. I'd only need to go to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten 10, 10 of those areas rather than 50 of those areas to target my approach. So here's another example, and this is a, a, um, a sensor being used in a, um, an airport, um, a food and beverage area. In fact, we've got quite a few different food and beverage outlets, um, but the sensors are all in the back area of the, the back of house. And so we're actually able to use the sensors and then look at behind the data is the information I have down lower. And it tells me the timestamps of the activity on each of these sensors. Now, what that allows us to do is actually go in and see the direction of how the rodents are moving throughout this facility. So it means that I've got rodents moving from left to right and then congregating and then moving right to left and then perhaps um, nesting and, and um, harboring there. Well, that allows me to actually find those entry points and seal them off and stop rodents moving from um, different um, independent facilities. And so that sort of information is really powerful to share with your client, but also to incorporate the use of proofing into how you move forward rather than using just rodenticides. So again, looking at the dashboard, just a screenshot again of another facility. Here I can see the primary congregation point. Now that would either be this one here or this one here. One would be nesting and one would be feeding. And you'll find that that's the way a lot of the sensor systems tend to give you a lot of detailed information, both in terms of time, the, the population density, and then also uh, how long they're spending in these areas. So. This is information that is very targeted and that allows me to literally remove rodents from this facility by uh, in 
um, doing a combination of uh, proofing and trapping and perhaps rodenticide use. But that information is vital for your clients. Okay, here's an example of an outdoor campus area uh, that we did a, a proof of concept with a, a few years back. And so this is just uh, an area that had uh, like a, almost like a university campus. And so we have a series of buildings. Our yellow dots are where we had our sensors. And within a 24 hour period or 48 hour period, we could see activity in one, two, three, and four locations of about the 23 or 24 um, areas that we had placed the sensors. And so that was a great way because particularly there's a, uh, an internal lake and a waterway running through this campus. Um, it was just a way of demonstrating where the activity is. We can follow that movement around and then create a far more targeted management approach. So just looking at the case studies, I'm going to show you a few, but I'm going to use that in our notes that I share with you at the end of today. So uh, back in 2018, um, Deanne, who's uh, on the ladder there and in our discussion today, um, Deanne and I um, undertook some uh, case studies with um, one of our, our original pest management partners. And so we did a five star hotel. Uh, uh, an office tower, a university, hospitality venue, and an indoor, indoor gaming venue. Now, the interesting information we learned from that, not just about our senses, about rodent activity, about rodent behavior was, was tremendous. And that all of those clients uh, ended up investing in either expanding the um, use of uh, sensors for that particular client. And these were all clients in crisis. We actually use sensors in areas of of perhaps issues with customer satisfaction. Um, and so by turning those five clients around and having them invest in the uh, use of sensors throughout their facility was a real gain for our, our confidence. So just looking at um, your target markets, in fact, actually, I've got this uh, um, one around the wrong way. I've, I've, I'll, I'll come back to our case studies in a minute. So looking at your target market, well, I think what we're looking at, not just a, a farm to fork type full spectrum of, of food production or food from harvesting to production, rodent sensors have a, a, a true outlook for the food industry because if we look at those areas of obviously food spoilage and impacts of rodents is obviously being tr uh, significant. But we also know that um, all of the, your commercial clients in food will be um, very specific in, in the uh, the, the HACCP requirements or AIB or their food safety and how you manage um, their, their rodent control. The interesting thing about rodent sensors is obviously is a truly transparent process because um, we're monitoring the pest, not just monitoring or auditing your service. And so it's a, a true element that your client is very aware of, of, of obviously your, your involvement in their treatment processes. But other market segments would be healthcare, hospitality, education, facilities, maintenance, warehousing, and obviously um, key public and government infrastructure. Okay, so these are just the case studies that I will actually share with you after today. But um, here's an example uh, of an airport with ha that had 400 devices. Uh, and so the interesting thing is there was no, no rodents being trapped within the area. So the rodents were actually um, uh, avoiding the traps that are in place. And so the data that was used from the incorporate, incorporating sensors into the suspended ceiling was able to give the pest managers a true understanding of where the rodent activity was and to actually change their deployment of trapping processes in order to um, reduce or eliminate the rodent activity. Another case study is one here in Melbourne uh, where there is 500 uh, devices. It's actually a smart campus. And so they're using the um, uh, sensors in order to manage all the systems and the serviceable items in the university. From the pest manager's perspective, they were actually able to uh, secure a long-term contract uh, with that particular client. Uh, they were actually able to use the sensors to actually manage the labor intensity of their employees and actually improve the outcome of rodent control because their rodent control became very targeted. That pest management company then incorporated the use of um, uh, you know, weather patterns to create predictive be uh, behavior and predictive um, uh, outcomes for uh, the rodent control. And so 
by basically just going and focusing on areas that required uh, an escalation, um, they were able to significantly increase their uh, rodent control, but in the same process, they were able to reduce their labor intensity on managing that client. Another example of a, a Melbourne facility is this entertainment complex. Again, 500 sensors. This was really important during COVID because then it allowed the pest manager to reduce uh, their contact within the facility and actually extend the intervals of, of accessing the, the facility. Um, historically, the rodents were actually in suspended uh, flooring and actually damaging cables throughout the flooring. And of course, in uh, entertainment complex, sensors were important where cameras couldn't be used. So I had a lot of different benefits to both the pest manager and the client. Uh, but the heat mapping was able to be populated and shared with the client so they could actually see the activity and then focus on those areas to improve the control processes. So, but the COVID uh, benefits were significant for that particular client, particularly when they were closed during Melbourne's wonderful lockdowns. Okay, let's just look at some sensors in traps. And so these are um, proof of concepts that we've conducted. This one was in Sydney. And so we use sensors within uh, the traps, but they can be placed on traps or also outside traps. But these were in rodent station sensors. And then we also use those sensors outdoors and they can be in the traps themselves. And that is actually allowing us to um, get an idea of the visitation um, and the behavioral changes that happen during a, a treatment process. Um, it's also going to allow the pest manager to be far more targeted in actually just interacting with the boxes that require a, a form of, of um, escalation. Then uh, external sensors being used as spatial sensors. So here we've got examples of sensors being used um, outside of the station themselves. And so that gives us an idea of, is there any bait shyness being exhibited by the rodents? Are they avoiding our rat boxes? And so one, we can find out, are they going in, but also are they avoiding those stations? And so that's where we can use them. And these are examples of uh, in behind um, refrigerators and under bars and outdoor areas. Uh, and of course, in suspended ceilings, this is one of the classic examples that sensors in suspended ceilings bring bring to us um, that can actually give us a great deal of information. They can be placed next to a snap trap or a rodent station or can just be used to give us the density profiling and the, and the distribution um, activity of, of rodents. It'll help us understand where the entry points are and so on. Okay, and again, more examples of sensors being used in um, suspended ceilings. In fact, the one on the left and one on the right are just in the, the uh, suspended ceiling just to my, my left. So, and again, spatial sensors being used to monitor rodent runways, both in indoor and outdoor applications and in bars. And again, the same process um, in, in indoor applications. And so anyway, so the bigger picture, I, essentially when we look at um, Sigfox, which is a, a Thinkstra business in Australia, uh, Optus, Telstra, and so on. They're trying to create smart buildings and smart cities. And that's where every ser serviceable item is connected to some form of sensor. Now they're interested in obviously the more people using their connectivity platforms, the more money they make, I mean, but also the more, um, there, there's more opportunity for them to create all of these different silos. And the silos is there's a rat sense silo and there'll be a Corteva silo and there's a Wisecon silo. The idea of the silos is all these different brands and all these different sensors for rodents or for lighting or for air conditioners, they're all individual dashboard processes. And what these companies, these telcos are trying to do is create these smart cities and link all of those sensor data into their own smart city platform. And so you'll start seeing in the major centers, um, the likes of these smart buildings. And one of the opportunities for us as an industry is to link in with these large corporations like Sigfox, Telstra and Optus 
to offer our sensors and our industry to help manage those processes. And so we're basically, as a business, we're looking to link our sensors with sensor deployment uh, professionals like the pest control industry. So we have a national marketplace in which to offer this sensor technology as form as to form part of these smart building processes. And so it's important for companies to understand temperature and humidity or, you know, the, the, the light life of a fluorescent tube. Uh, but it's also important for those same companies to understand rodent activity or other pests. So I think that there's a lot of opportunity for small to large businesses in Australia in, in the world of pest to gain access to that marketplace. So what the future of electronic rodent sensors? Well, sensors will become smaller. Uh, one would expect they would become cheaper, um, but also things like battery life, uh, robotics and their AI or their artificial intelligence will be improved. You'll probably look at things like species identification, uh, 3D mapping, predictive behavior. Right now we look at customizing what's called API data. And so that API data can be customized to a dashboard for your pest management firm. And so while we use the rat sense uh, dashboard, we can also provide that same information to your own personal dashboard, should you be having your own um, information transfer with your clients. Um, so then of course, while I've mentioned things like rat sense and Ave sense, you'll start seeing a wide variety of different sensors for different pests, be it flies, um, termites, and a raft of other insects, which will be quite exciting for our industry. So just finishing off the, the, the future of where we are now, I guess essentially there's a clear cost saving opportunity for the pest control industry to be using and deploying sensors. So that'll actually see, you know, a reduced cost in running your business, a reduced labor intensity, but also a greater sales potential to grow your business with new clients. It's also important to note that you can actually scale your business because while you're reducing the labor intensity of the rodent aspect of your client, uh, you can then obviously improve your efforts in both pest management or hopefully bring more clients to your portfolio. Another important element is that the improved animal welfare commitments because that's a massive issue and there's been a real significant cultural change in Australia about the impact of you know, animal welfare, be it for greyhounds and, and uh, thoroughbreds right through down to rats and foxes and feral cats. So the interesting thing is how we manage our vertebrate pests will be truly dependent on, you know, um, um, uh, what we'd call real time access to uh, captured animals. Um, so we can also minimize rodent activity or the impact of rodents on your client's infrastructure and also reduce their operational disruption. So early warning detections will be a, a really important aspect of the future of, of um, rodent sensors. Also in Australia, you know, what's probably held back the use of sensors is the connectivity platform. We're a big country with a small population. And so trying to get things like the IOT network and the, um, uh, the, um, and the GSM network to work with all your different sort of uh, sensors is, is a challenge. And same with um, deep indoor access to connectivity in a lot of your facilities will also be a challenge. And so those improvements are happening uh, on, a, on an ongoing basis. But basically the future of rodent sensors is you'll be able to solve rodent issues prior to an escalation or damage to your client's portfolio. Okay, so just from a rat sense point of view, uh, our team's an Australian team. We're based here in Australia. Our uh, support team is on my left, might could be your right, I'm not sure, uh, with Julia, myself, uh, Deanne and uh, Dominic are all uh, actually in our, uh, our chat today. Um, but our, our help desk, our training and our technical department is here in Australia. Okay, all our data is um, AWS hosted in Australia. And that's really important for the confidential, confidentiality and security of your business, but also your customers' um, security. A lot of companies will use offshore uh, sensors and offshore um, uh, help desk, but also offshore 
server storage to hold that information. It's really critical. When you're dealing with an Australian company, we're charged in Australian dollars and so no foreign exchange, and our stock is held here in Melbourne. We're also a res uh, registered responsible supplier for EMC uh, with ACMA and EES, e -E -E -S, and that's critically important because there are a lot of sensors on this open international market that will not be uh, certified for use in Australia. So really important. All right, so really just by looking at what we've shared today, um, I'd say gone are the times of, of you know, having a, a pencil and pad and going around and, and keeping notes. I actually think the days of um, uh, barcoding are gone. Uh, barcoding is just auditing your pest control service. It's not auditing the pest. Um, so sensors truly monitor the pests that we're dealing with. Uh, automated reporting is the future of um, rodent sensor technology and improving all the things that we've discussed today. Um, I'd just like to thanks you, thank you for your time. If you